Hey everyone, today we're back in sea power, this time doing an escort along the Norwegian coast. Coming from the air to the sea gives a different set of challenges that you must overcome. I thought the best way to illustrate that was to give a more raw playthrough and think out loud as I navigate this mission. For some, this may be the first time you are playing a Cold War naval game. So this means there are unique challenges that you get to play through, which is neat because it makes the playing experience unique and fun. This game comes out in November, so wishlisted. And keep in mind that this is an early build so we can show off the game. Not everything is final. If this is your first time here, this channel focuses on multiplayer and gameplay. So if you're into that, please subscribe. All right, so we are starting off our mission called Gauntlet. One of the scenarios that came with the playable build in Sea Power. Now the premise is that uh, we are resupplying troops that are trapped in Narvik, which is in Norway. And we have a flotilla of four. Now, what I'm going to do is talk about what, what we have. Let's take inventory of what we have. So we have a Perry class frigate. We ha called the uh, Halley Burton, excuse me. We have the Badger which is a Knox class frigate. We have the USS President Van Buren flying under a US flag. And it is a improved C4 class, which I'm not really familiar with because I don't know merchant ships. And then we have the Schlottenberg, which is under a Danish flag. And this is a, just a general cargo ship. So, Oh, look, interesting. That's funny. Um, what we're going to do is first things first, let's put our sensors on. Air search on. Radar eye. And Surface search on. I want to change our formation. So basically, as I mentioned in the very beginning, we are headed toward Narvik and uh, we are coming up along the Norwegian coast. So my plan or my idea, I should say, is I'm going to move these ships to basically orientate a little bit more toward the coast. Now, if that's a good idea or not, we will find out. And, uh, oops, one thing I wanted to flag in here is that the max formation speed is 18 and a half knots. Right, so this is really cool because it knows what the slowest ship is and it basically spits out what's the fastest speed. And when we look at the lead ship, again, the Halliburton is at 17 knots. And then when we look at the Badger, this dude's hustling at 21 knots. Why? Because he's getting into the new formation that I've set. So this is great. So we are going to be getting information. And the other thing I want to point out is that this is going to be a long trip. It is currently 11:12 Zulu time. And uh, we are not expected to arrive at our current speed to the first destination by 1649, which is basically five and a half hours from now. So we are, of course, not going to play for five hours straight. We're going to use time dilation, which I'm going to start now to speed it up. And uh, we will slow it back down once something has happened. New radar contact designate track seven zero zero one. New radar contact designate. Track All right. Seven zero zero two. These guys are coming in at six hundred knots in formation at three thousand feet. Now we are not in Vietnam, and I do not re need to repeat the same mistakes uh, for my first playthrough and get obliterated by ancient aircraft. So we are going weapons free. Now these guys will not shoot at this yet because they're un unidentified. So what I'm gonna do is IFF. They have not responded. Now I don't think these are gonna be civilian aircraft because they're flying in formation and they're flying fast as hell. So I'm marking them as hostile. Now we have these SM1s which have a range of 17 miles. These guys are 68 miles away. So we have some time. What does the Badger have? The Badger has uh, Rim 7s, which are Sea Sparrows. So these have a range of 10 miles. So that's a much smaller missile. 
So it's going to be mostly the honey, or sorry, the Halliburton that's going to be engaging these guys from distance because he has 70% more range. Now, the other thing, too, to think about is these planes are hauling ass. They're going 600 knots straight at me. So the, on the aspect, uh, they're closing on me. So what will be really interesting is if I can fire one of these missiles outside of the maximum range, because these guys might actually end up flying right into it, which we'll see if it works or not, because I have actually not tested that. And I'm actually really curious. So very useful. We see the uh, max range here. Oh. Seven, zero, zero, radar... Okay, so we have something else coming in. Seven, and zero, these zero, are... Four. 600 knots, 3,000 feet. So this is basically the exact same thing as the other guys. So I'm going to mark them as hostile. And now when they're marked as hostile and these guys are set to weapons... Or my sh ships are set to weapon free, they will engage when they're in range. Okay, weapons free and weapons free. Okay, so we have these ships. Excuse me, these airplanes coming in at us. I didn't change anything while we were waiting for these guys to get closer, but now I'm thinking about it. I'm going to have this ship actually pop out and get a little bit closer. It might be too late. Should have thought about this earlier, but whatever. Oops, that was the console. Um, okay, so I decided that I'm going to fire when these guys are 20 miles away, because I want to see with the, with the head-on closure, if this missile will actually be able to hit, even if it's outside the max range, because basically they'll fly into it, but we'll see if this actually works or not. So 28 miles, now just under it. I mean, these guys are booking at 600 knots. I'm not sure what they are, Twenty-five miles. Okay, so let's see how long it takes for this thing to fire. Okay, so here we get the missile getting ready and fired off at twenty-two miles away. So that's the first one away. Now. They are just radar contacts, so we can't even click to see what they are. I don't know if this thing is going to hit. I mean, it, is, it was fired well out of its max range. Is it going to make it? Let's see. Okay, another missile just got fired out. Oh, it actually hit him. I was just about to say that missile was losing steam. Okay, so this got this one fired off at the last remaining one from that group because there's two more coming from our east. Come on, hit him. Hit him. There we go. So they're make 23s. And these guys are not quite in range yet, still 30 miles away. So we're feeling really good now, feeling like this is not going to be a big issue. I'm actually going to get this guy back into his regular formation because I don't think he needs to be that far out. Let's see, what does this thing have? It has surface. So the range is 400 miles. Oh, that's actually pretty long range. Oh, it's interesting. So they have all the different bands modeled. Interesting. Okay. These guys in range yet? 22. Okay. So that it worked last time. So maybe it'll work with these guys too. I'm going to see if I can get these guys with the first two shots. 
So we see the green lines indicating what the targets are for each missile. Come on. Okay, MiG-23 down. I'm just going to hit this hit. Okay, so that one didn't make it. For whatever reason. Now this guy's getting pretty close. He's 12 miles away. I want to see if we can get an idea of what the weapons are. I'm going to fire one more because I don't want to take any chances. Because I don't have that many escort ships. Oh, shoot. He actually beat the missile. That's actually not good. Okay, so he's 10 miles away. And this guy hasn't fired his SAM off yet. Okay, now we got him. Excellent. Okay, so we're in a good spot now. The first... Two ways of enemies have been taken care of. And we can go back to weapons being tight. Now, let's see or get an understanding if these radars have any big difference in range. Because does it make sense to have the Badger up front or not? So these guys... Okay, so it's not a big difference. 67, that was 104. Thing is, I don't really know which bands I want to be prioritizing. So I'm just going to keep the ships close together because this is not my area of expertise. What was that thing they just said? I didn't hear it. Was there a contact? Um, just so you guys know, there in the playable build that we got for the content creators, there was no tutorial. So we kind of had to teach ourselves. And we've been talking to developers and they've been teaching us some stuff, but the the radars and such for the surface to surface radars, I'm not my area of expertise. But it would be interesting to figure out which bands are the ones you want to prioritize for certain certain areas. Okay, so now that this first and second wave have been eliminated, we're going to go ahead and speed up this time dilation to get closer to target. Okay, so it has been... I'm going to pause. Let me zoom out so you don't get the noise to loop. So it's been about an hour. Actually, maybe an hour and a half since the, in terms of in-game time since the mission has started. We are much closer to the first... Uh, rally point or waypoint, I should say. Uh, we are 75 miles. I think we started about 100 miles away from the very beginning, or maybe 90 miles away. So we've done a chunk of it. Now, as we were heading toward target, we did pick up on our radar a SSN9 anti ship missile. And it is coming straight at us, which is a problem. So we are going to go ahead and start engaging these things. Go weapon spree. Okay, nothing is in range yet. Now, these anti-ship missiles are actually really scary because one of these could be devastating to me. And I'm going to fire as soon as it gets into range. Now, the good thing is is that unlike the airplanes that have munitions and they can fire off from a distance, this thing uh, obviously has to fly into me. And its speed... Oh, its speed is constant. I thought it was slowing down by now. Okay. Interesting. So... Okay, he was already firing. Perfect.
Let's see. Are we gonna hit? They might actually be really hard to see because these missiles. Oh, here we go. I think I see something in front of me. Uh oh. So that thing is sea skimming. Oh shoot, this thing might actually get through. Where's this uh, phalanx? Oh, we got it. Excellent. Okay, now the question is, what was that? Because it fired, or it was fired from something. So we're gonna go investigate with a helicopter. Now, I think that was an SSN9. So those are usually fired, I'm looking at Wikipedia really quickly, uh, from Corvettes or submarines. Hopefully it's a Corvette. But we're gonna go ahead and launch our helicopter and then we're gonna start investigating what the hell that, w what fired at us. And hopefully our helicopter can find it uh, without getting popped by Sam's. Okay, this thing is 19 miles away. Now, helicopter is getting ready. I'm going to send him out in that direction. Good thing is, is that these missiles are being fired one at a time. There's not like a big volley of them. So this, the Halliburton Perry class ship is able to kind of, seems like so far able to deal with it. It's not overwhelming. Unless I just totally jinked myself. Excellent. So this guy needs to get up. I might actually launch. How many cups do I have? This one only has one. And I think the Halliburton had two. Yeah, so I'm going to... I only have three total, so I'm not going to really risk it. And spend a whole bunch and send all of them. Well, actually, hmm. Maybe I will send them all, actually. I'll send one more. Because what if it was a submarine? I would imagine if a submarine was firing, it would not just fire one at a time. It would just volley them all off. Not an expert in submarine tactics, but you know, that's my guess. So we are heading to waypoint from basically where we detected that missile. And we're gonna see what we see. No, speaking of which, I gotta put the radar on. You know what, I'm gonna drop a sonar buoy, buoy just in case. And I'm gonna send this other helicopter up ahead in front of me. to go look for things, to clear the way, so to speak. I guess what I could do is like, send a, send one hel helicopter up ahead and drop sonar buoys just in case there's no, uh... oh wait, we just picked something up. 
New passive contact. Okay, so there's someone over there. But that's a pretty big range. Oh, here we go. Noise, 100 miles away. Okay, so we're setting up the buoys. And, uh, starting to build a picture of what's going on. I'm gonna click off that helicopter just so we get a different sound. New radar contact. Okay, so now we have more SSN9s coming in. And now there's a pair. So there's definitely someone over there. Okay, three of them. Not good. Four of them. Okay, so there's the volley that I was scared of. Actually, I'm going to just tell this guy to hightail it over there just because I want to get eyes on whatever that target is, you know what I'm, what I'm dealing with. I mean, these things do have, I think they have harpoons. And they have 65 nautical mile range. So if I can find whatever is over there, I do have a lot of reach and I can start sending my own anti-ship missiles at them. Start deploying some chaff. Okay, that one did not make it. Okay, we got one on there. There's three more coming in. Yeah, I mean, I mean, these SM1s are doing work. I mean, they're, yeah, they're definitely working. I mean, they're just chewing through these guys. Okay, that was unfortunate. That one missed. This is five miles away. This is getting really close now. So close that I'm actually scared that my missiles won't be able to reach it anymore because it'll be too close. Okay, this one missed. This thing is coming in. It might actually hit. Please don't hit. Oh, it was short. No way. That might be the first time I've ever seen an anti-ship missile actually miss because it wasn't shot down. That's actually incredible. Awesome. I think what I'm gonna start have to start doing is I'm gonna have to start breaking up this formation because I feel like my ships are a little bit too static. Like I feel like I should be doing a little bit more invasive maneuvers. So let's. Okay, so I'm trying to get to make sure the waypoints are set up. So I'm going to set one up here, and then here, and then here. Now, the question is how many anti ship missiles does that thing have that's firing at me? Oh, 
Well, it might be two things. I mean, it looks like it's narrowing it down. Okay, so these things are hostile. Okay, so they're definitely hostile. And it is a ship with 39 knots, 38 knots. That's pretty quick. Okay, so Harpoon's already out from the Halliburton as soon as it identified it as enemy. The sonar buoy or the helicopter was able to identify that this was, uh, that these were enemy ships. The question is, what kind of enemy ships are we dealing with? All right. So, again, 38 knots. 38 knots. And we have the harpoons coming in. And this guy is just ripping them off. Does this guy have anything that can fire? No, it's rockets, torpedo. Yeah, that's, that's the sparrow. So, yeah, this is going to be all up to the Halliburton. The Halliburton's carrying this entire flotilla. Okay, now this is interesting because now we're firing harpoons only off this hard point off the nose and we are not going to be able to fire the harpoons and the SM1s and we just fired our last SM1. So I'm going to point chaff. Off. So what I'm thinking here, I might need to move this badger up actually. All right, let's see here what's going on. We have four inbound. Away. Where's my helicopter? Yeah, this might actually be a problem. Yeah, there go there goes the sparrows. We're getting them. These sea sparrows are becoming really clutch all of a sudden. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. This is the last chance right here. Oh, shoot. It's going for the uh, merchant ship. Oh, it's actually going to hit, I think. Yep, dead. That's not good. Damage control. Everything's on fire. Everything's pretty much knocked out. So this thing's probably cooked. That's a problem. I'm going to have this. Hmm. Do I make it leave the formation? Oh, another SS9, SSN9 is coming in. And I only have one Sea Sparrow left. I'm actually going to be in trouble if more airplanes come. Oh, there's a lot more coming. This is not good. This is not good. So these things are going 615 knots. Our harpoons are going 540, so they're actually a lot slower. And there are, there's the anti-air.
Not sure what the target is, but let's see if we can hit. I mean, I really wish I had visual what it was. All right, so we're hitting. Yeah, I'm really concerned about these two. Uh, a Nunchuka. Oh, okay, so there's the, there's the missile batteries. This is what was lobbing six of them at me. And there's something, another Nunchuka. And it looks like it's maneuvering. Shot it down. I'm gonna rip these off or like fire these out before my ship gets hit. Because I have a feeling that these are gonna hit my cruiser here, which could be a big problem. Nice. Looks like that one got fooled by the chaff. And this one looks like it's gonna hit. That's a problem. Okay, so that was a problem because I just got overwhelmed. I just got overwhelmed and we lost the Van Buren. So now we're down to two. Okay, so formation leader. Great. So let's see. Formation. Leave formation. And then we're going to join formation. And the badger is going to lead it. And I'm going to get it really close. So hopefully it can benefit from the chaff. And I think I'm gonna have to close the distance on this thing because if my harpoons don't knock it out, we're in trouble. And I might, ooh, I didn't know, I, my other helicopter went down. That was in the cruiser. So that's another tool that's not available to me anymore. That's not good. Okay, so I'm gonna get this guy super low. So this Nanchuka, oh, Nan, Nanuchka, I was saying it wrong the whole time. Nanuchka um, does have Sam, so I'm gonna be careful of that. I wonder if I should fly even lower. Now, I'm not sure if these torpedoes are gonna be able to be used against active sonar homing. Hmm. Is this going to work against a ship? We are about to find out. Unless these harpoons do their work. And this thing just loaded up some SAMs. Alright, last chance. This is the last harpoon that I have. Oh, I dodged it. Oh, it's happening.
Wait. Oh, okay. It it uh it paused it because of the complete. Okay, nice. That was the last ship. That scared me. I thought uh I, I haven't had the game crash on me yet, but so I was I was scared of it crash. But uh nice. That wow that harpoon actually kinda just snapped this that ship like it was nothing. Okay, so we took out four floggers and we took out two non nanuchkas. And uh, we did lose the Van Buren and the Halliburton, but we did get through with the Schladenberg and the Badger, along with the helicopters. So, pretty good. I know some of you are requesting a more raw view into the game, so I hope this video scratched that itch. Let me know your thoughts below, and if you would like to help, please subscribe. Thank you.